about this work is to uh, reduce the global uh, warming. So when the temperature uh, gets higher, so people need more uh, uh, energy in order to cool things, uh, such as by uh, using the electrical uh, air conditioning. Okay, but for air conditioning, it just uh, use the electricity to move heat from inside a building to outside building. So there's actually uh, uh, no uh, really reduction of the total amount of heat. Okay, and as the electricity is also converted uh, to heat at the end, so the net effect of air conditioning is actually uh, is actually uh, heating. Okay, and also because of the use of electricity, so the cooling also generates lots of carbon dioxide, and the electricity may not be accessible in many uh, developing countries. So then the question is whether we can develop a method. Uh, to cool things without using any uh, electricity. So it seems that this is impossible because the certain law of thermodynamics tells us heat cannot move from cold to hot uh, without work. And the electricity is the most common way to, 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 to do the work. Okay, but uh, although we cannot uh, violate the certain law of thermodynamics, so there is a way to circumvent it. So that's to find uh, a cold source around us and transfer heat from the Earth's surface to the cold source. Okay, so if you move heat from hot to cold, then you don't need to use uh, electricity. And fortunately, uh, we have a very good cold source around us. So that's the universe itself. Okay, so the universe is at three Kelvin and uh, for uh, the surface of the Earth, it actually can transfer heat to the cold sky by so-called uh, radiation. Okay, so and uh, so if the surface on the Earth is actually uh, highly reflective in the solar spectrum, so like for the sunlight, so then the surface also will not be heated by the sunlight. Okay, and in this way, if the surface is not heated by the sun, and it also can transfer heat to the cold sky, then it will cool by itself spontaneously uh, to be lower than the ambient temperature. Okay, so in terms of the optical properties, it means that in the solar spectrum, okay, like from the 0.2 to 2 micron uh, meter uh, in wavelengths, so the reflectance should be very high, okay, so that it will not receive any energy from the sunlight. And at the same time, in the thermal uh, radiation part, the reflectance will should be very, very low, okay. So uh, that indicates the emissivity, so which means the capability to radiate uh, heat, okay? So will be one, so that, that's uh, a very high uh, value. Uh, the uh, take home message from this slide is that high solar uh, reflectance and high thermal emittance equals to the net cooling uh, below ambient temperature, okay? Uh, so this concept has, uh, Draw lots of attention in the last several uh, years, and there are some very clever de uh, designs from uh, different groups, so like uh, the pioneering uh, work from Stanford, uh, Shanghui Fan's uh, group, okay, by using the photonic uh, crystals, and also uh, la later on, uh, Xiao Bo Ying and uh, Rong Guiyang from the University of Colorado also use this ceramics in polymer to achieve a high solar uh, reflectance of 96% and also uh, thermal uh, emittance of 93%. But uh, for these structures, one drawback is that they are in a film-like uh, structure. So film-like structure means that uh, uh, they are very difficult to apply to surface uh, with, uh, 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 with, uh, with a non-flat uh, shape, okay? So for example, uh, if you have a rough surface, so uh, and, if, and uh, you put the uh, film on top of it, the film can cool by itself. But the rough surface means the thermal contact resistance is very high. So in this case, so the cooling is very difficult to be transferred to inside uh, the building. And also they are very difficult to apply to the different sh shapes. And also uh, the thin film uh, uh, manufacturing actually has a high cost, so it may not be good for the developing countries. So ideally, we actually want something like a paint. Okay, so you can directly brush 
the radiative cooling uh, coating onto uh, arbitrary shape uh, of buildings. So how to achieve that? So we are actually inspired by the nature. So we know that the ice is transparent. That means it has a low solar reflectance, but the snow, uh, which is made of ice, is highly reflective. So why is that? So the reason is that there's lots of uh, nanostructures inside, okay? So for this nanostructures at the interface between the ice and the air, due to the mismatch in refractive index, okay? so that the light will be scattered at such uh, interfaces. So for uh, solar spectrum, uh, the uh, ice is transparent, not absorptive, so that uh, the uh, scattering will reflect some sunlight back to the uh, sky. And after many, many reflectors, so all uh, sunlight will be reflected so that the reflectors is very high. So at the same time, in the infrared part, the uh, ice is absorptive. So this scattering actually will enhance the absorption. Okay, so that you can see that the thermal emittance of the snow is also slightly higher than ice itself. Okay, so basically uh, the important things is first, you need to have a nano structures to efficiently scatter light, okay. And you need to have the uh, intrinsic uh, transparency in the solar spectrum and also a strong uh, absorption in the infrared part. So, but we cannot use ice as the uh, uh, paint because it will melt at zero degree Celsius, right? So, but we can borrow this concept and then develop some nano structures to mimic the structure of snow, okay? So what we do is to use a, a fluoropolymer called PVDFHFP. So here is a, a molecular structure uh, of this polymer and dissolve it in acetone and add a little bit of water inside. Okay, then if you brush it onto a surface, okay, then because acetone is very uh, volatile, so it will evaporate first. Then it leaves the uh, polymer and also uh, water uh, inside. So the water will form micro droplets, so and then wrapped by the PVDF HIP uh, precipitate out. And after uh, water is evaporated, so the, the you will get a porous uh, PVDF. Okay. So let me show you a video. So here is the mixture of the PVDF and the acetone and the, uh, uh, water. So if you just uh, drop, uh, drop it onto a substrate. So just after several seconds, or you can see it will become pretty white. Okay, and in this white film, you will see these pores uh, structures. And PVDF HIP have a similar properties as uh, uh, water. Okay, in the uh, solar spectrum, so there's almost no absorption. Okay, and in the infrared part, so there's lots of uh, vi uh, uh, bond vibration so that it actually will absorb the infrared light, so uh, leading to high uh, emitters. And this nanostructure or microstructures will actually will better scatter uh, light, okay? So overall, so these structures in principle will, should give us a high reflectance and a high thermal uh, emitters. And the optical measurement uh, uh, approve this, okay? So you can see that uh, uh, in the uh, solar spectrum, the reflectance is very high, it's very close to uh, 100%. And uh, in this uh, infrared part, you can see that the thermal emitters is uh, pretty high. Or the other one, the, the reflectance is very low, nearly uh, 0%. So actually we can achieve 96% of solar reflectors uh, at a thickness of 300 micro uh, meter, and uh, also uh, almost 99% Solar reflectors uh, when the thickness is increased to uh, 0.8 uh, millimeter. Okay, so that actually means that it absorbs almost no sunlight. Uh, so, in order to demonstrate that uh, such coating can really cool by itself uh, below ambient temperature, we actually uh, put uh, a sample, a 
they, they, uh, this is like a 15 centimeter by 15 uh, centimeter in size. And uh, in Arizona, so that's uh, the sunlight is very strong, like 900 uh, watt per uh, meter per, uh, per meter square. Okay, so that's the temperature, the surface temperature of this field is actually six degrees Celsius cooler than the environment. Okay, so you can see that you can cool by itself and uh, as large as 60, uh, uh, as large as six uh, degrees Celsius. And uh, also another test test you can do is to put a heater uh, behind the fuel and try to use the heater to keep the temperature of the sample uh, the same as the environment and then measure the uh, power to the heater. And the such power is the maximum cooling power, okay? So you can see that the cooling power can reach about 100 uh, watts per uh, meter square, okay? So that's actually a pretty attractive uh, numbers. Okay. So, uh, and uh, this film also have uh, uh, a lot of applications. Uh, so it actually can uh, adhere well to different uh, substrates. So for example, on plastic, on copper, and uh, also on, on wood. So that means they can be used for the different building uh, surfaces. Okay. And uh, here is actually uh, a nature, uh, Re re report to review the progress in uh, radiative cooling uh, materials, including the research uh, by the Stanford, by the uh, Toronto uh, teams, and also by ours. So uh, I encourage you to take a, a look. So it actually is a good summary of the progress uh, so far. Okay. So, uh, Another challenge in the field is how to achieve cooling. So if the paint is colored. So we know that we, we not always want a white paint. Okay, so uh, for example, uh, uh, especially in residential buildings, so white is sometimes not preferred. Okay, so then the question is, can we achieve cooling? So when we have the color uh, inside. So color actually uh, means that there are some absorption of light, okay. Uh, but uh, the sunlight actually have two parts. So one is the uh, uh, visible uh, light, and the other is the infrared uh, light. So uh, with the uh, uh, wavelength between the 0.7 to 2.5 uh, micron me meters, and this part light is what people can now see. Okay. So for colors, uh, you do need some absorption in the visible light in order to uh, uh, appear the color. But in the infrared part, you actually can tune the, uh, the reflectance uh, to reduce the heating, uh, the absorption of this infrared light. Okay, and here are uh, some examples. So the left row is a, a new paint uh, we make. So, and I'm going to talk about it in the next uh, slide. So, and the right uh, uh, column is the conventional paint. So you can see that in the visible parts, their appearance is the same. But if you use a camera uh, that's sensitive to the near infrared light, you will see that the left column, so it has a really high reflectance, okay? And uh, the uh, right column, so the conventional paint, so the reflectance is much lower, okay? So that indicates that there are ways to control the reflectance in the, thermal, uh, uh, in the near infrared part in order to achieve uh, a higher solar reflectance and achieve uh, cooling. Okay. Uh, so the method we use is called a bilayer uh, design. So basically, unlike a conventional uh, paint, that's just a single uh, layer. So here we use two uh, layers. So we have a top uh, layer, so that can absorb the visible light to give you the color you want, okay? And the bottom layer is a porous PVDF I just talked about, okay. And this layer can strongly scatter and reflect the near infrared light, okay. So you actually not have much absorption of the near infrared light, but you actually can have the near infrared light to be fully uh, re reflected, so to achieve a high solar uh, re reflectance. And uh, the bottom here are some simulations to show that these bilayer structures can indeed increase the uh, 
roof lattice in the infrared part. Okay, and here is a uh, uh, optical spectrum of uh, this uh, color, the cooling paint. So you can see for this black curve, uh, for, for uh, this black paint, the bilayer has a very high uh, infrared uh, reflectance of like almost 80%, and for the conventional paint, it's like 30 to 40%. So if you uh, put it under strong sunlight, you can see the temperature of the conventional paint is like 80 degree, it's like 8 to 10 uh, degrees Celsius higher than the uh, bilayer structure with the porous uh, PVDI paint. So that uh, confirms that we can actually achieve this uh, colored uh, cooling paint. Okay, to summarize my talk, so I think the important uh, take home message is that first, uh, by controlling the uh, optical properties uh, of a surface, you can fully reflect sunlight and also emit heat to the cold sky uh, in the mid infrared. And by combining these two uh, properties, so the surface can cool by itself uh, without using any electricity to uh, be uh, below the ambient uh, temperature. And uh, if you want some color, so then we can also control the uh, optical properties. So the uh, surface has a high uh, reflectance in the uh, infrared part and a low reflectance in the uh, 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 in the uh, and also the same uh, reflectance in the uh, visible part, so that. Uh, we don't have the same color, but the, the uh, solar reflectance is as high as possible uh, to re reduce the uh, excessive uh, heating. Okay. So finally, I want to acknowledge my team and also the funding uh, support from NSF and also my collaborators, uh, especially uh, Nan Fang Yu. So he has us a lot uh, on how to uh, measure the uh, re reflectance in different uh, wavelengths. Thank you.